You know what time it is? Disassembly time! Hi, I'm Jeremy with Poindexter G, and it's time to take this 1884 trapdoor apart. And while there are differences between this and the other trapdoors, there's really nothing that will be different as far as disassembly goes. What you'll need to take this apart is a flathead screwdriver, something to use as a punch, maybe a soft rubber mallet, and also maybe some sort of lubricant to help you get some things apart. There's a few different things that we can do on this assembly. We can remove the lock work on it here. We can remove the latch and the firing pin out of the door. We can remove the door and we can also completely remove the barrel and the receiver from the stock. You can also take out the trigger assembly. I'm not going to do that for two reasons. First of all, these screws that hold it into here are actually wood screws. They are not going in the metal. They're just going into the stock. So every time you loosen these, you end up wearing out that hole a little bit, and it's not going to fit back in there as tightly. As you can see here, somebody had also tried to remove this at some point and chipped part of the stock right there, which is very easy to do. I have no idea when that happened. And I recommend you leave the trigger assembly alone unless you have a very compelling reason to do it. One thing you want to make sure that you never do on disassembly is remove the door while it is still in the stock. You don't ever want to do that because this piece here sticks down below the stock and if you try to drive that out, you're gonna break a piece of your stock out. First of all, just like any gun, you wanna make sure that it's empty because you don't wanna do this with a round in there. We'll go ahead and leave the hammer here in the half cocked position. I'm going to remove the cleaning rod as that will generally make things easier not having this inside the stock. I'm going to start with taking the lock work out here. That is done with the tang screw which will be located right here. You'll also need to remove these two screws here. What you will want to do as you take these out is to loosen each of these evenly. You push on these to help loosen that. If it doesn't want to come off, you can give it a few knocks. Then that will just simply lift off like that. You can push back on these guys and take them out. Both of these screws here have a washer to go behind it there that may or may not come out with it depending on how old your gun is. Here you can see all this where you can get into access into there and clean that. Don't see any reason to try to take any of this apart so we'll just leave that alone. Also don't move the hammer while you have it out. Now that we've got that off we can try to remove the main part of the rifle from the stock. What we'll need to do here is remove both of these barrel bands off. That can basically be done by pressing this piece right there, holding that down and allowing it to slide over. Now the barrel bands may be a little bit difficult to remove. That's going to vary a lot from one rifle to another. On mine, the front comes off without a whole lot of trouble. It just slides off like so. This guy is the one that really gives me some trouble. In my case, I usually have to lubricate it a little bit to help it go. It can also help to pop the side up and just get that out of the way. As you can see, it takes a little bit of force here to get that going. You may have to take something here and kind of give it a little bit of a, a nudge there to go. Just kind of light taps on it. Don't want to damage any of this. takes a long time to come off that's okay you just want to do this really slowly because you really really don't want to damage this thing it'll eventually come off just takes a while there we go popped right loose there and that will just slide off like so now we'll open up the door we'll turn this over and this will just fall right out like that 
If you want to clean your stock any, this is a really good time to do that while you've got it apart. Next, we'll get the door taken off here. We talked earlier about this ejector extractor right here. We've got that and a small spring under it there. The spring is not under a whole lot of tension, so it tends to not fly out of here. You still want to be careful with it, but it's not like a lot of modern rifles where things are under so much tension it just shoots out instantly. Pretty much you'll just need to take something, put it right there, and drive this out. The key to this whole thing is just finesse. Just don't get in a hurry with this. You'll see that this piece is coming out right here. That's exactly what we want it to do. And right there, popped out. So now I can take this out. That went right there. We'll just watch this piece as we pull this out. We can take that off and then right in here we have a tiny spring and a tiny plunger. You might have to take something to get it out. Right there. The spring right there. And that plunger. These are tiny little parts. And they're old tiny little parts that you don't want to lose. You also want to make sure that you keep track of this spring because there is a spring inside the door here that we're going to be getting to in just a bit. To get the door open, we're going to need a flathead screwdriver. Right here we have a screw, and that'll be the first thing we'll start with. We just undo this screw like so. Once again, keep track of this screw because there's another screw that will be on there. This piece will come out and right here we've got our other spring, which is why I told you to keep track of it. Once again, this spring is not under a whole lot of pressure, so it doesn't go flying out of there. Next, we'll have a screw that's right here and that screw will allow us to take the firing pin out. This screw comes out. This screw, which is the one that holds the firing pin in, is a little bit shorter than the other screw that you had. So you can tell them apart, but just make sure you keep them straight. Then the firing pin should just come out just like that. And this is as disassembled as I'm going to get with it here. I'm going to cut and take a moment to clean a lot of these parts that I don't get in too much. Once you've got everything cleaned up and you're ready to put it back together, it's largely just reversing the process, although there are a few places where there are some tricks that make it a bit easier. Alright, we'll start by putting the firing pin back inside the door. You'll see that the firing pin has a notch in it right here that this little screw goes into. It doesn't tighten all the way down into it, but it basically just rides in there, and that's what keeps it from being able to fall you want to put it in right here with the notch facing up. Slide that in there till it stops. Put that shorter screw in that came with it and tighten it all the way back down back into place. Once that tightens down there you should see that the firing pin will just Flop around in there. You can push it there and see the end up. Push it there and that end goes out. Next, we'll want to put the latch back on the door. You also need to make sure that we put the spring inside its little slot that it goes into right in there. Basically, this latch, this plate that's on the latch here, lines up with that right there and goes into it. We'll basically, just put the spring into its hole. This will slide in just like that. Takes a little bit for this to get in there, but eventually it will go into place. But then once it pops into place, you'll feel it that that'll be spring loaded. And it'll all be in there. You hold that together so it doesn't come apart. Put this screw right into there, and then we're going to thread that into place. That will just tighten down all the way. And then we'll 
fill that go right there and we have the firing pin in it loose so that's good now we're ready to put the door onto here and this is where things get a little bit tricky now we'll take our spring and our plunger we're going to put the plunger inside the spring that spring is going to go right inside the hole there where it came from earlier we'll take this piece with a small little bit hanging up here and that hanging down like that you should have a notch right there that lines up with the plunger you put that right up against the plunger there we then take our door and we put our door in then what we can do is take our rod and feed from this side through the door and then we just work this we have to push down on the plunger do that until this feeds all the way through like that that's going to be the simplest way to get that fed into there what we'll do now is we'll take this piece here you see that it has a little bump right here it corresponds with a hole right here on the receiver We're basically going to just use this piece to push our rod through and feed back through the receiver the extractor and the door start up to there then what you'll need to do is basically push in on the door and the receiver and this until at some point it will eventually pop into place there and you can tell once you catch it then what you'll need to do is just rotate this around so that that notch goes into the hole push that through there it may take a little bit of tapping to get it into place. You'll be able to look at it and tell when it's completely in. And then once it's in, it's in there. And you should be able to see the door operate like properly. It'll go up to here as soon as it pushes that, the extractor will pop into place and you know it's working right. This bottom part of the barrel here doesn't get access a whole lot, so I like to put a little bit of oil on it now we're going to take the barrel and the receiver here and we're going to put that back into the stock there we'll want to go ahead and put the barrel bands back on Just like it was a little hard to go off, it doesn't always want to come back on easily. Sometimes a little bit of oil can help encourage it to pop back into place. But once again, if nothing else, we can usually get it back into place the same way that we got it off. Once it pops back into place, it'll snap pretty good. You'll see that this piece here has popped back up, and that'll be good. We'll now grab this here. You want to put the stacking swivel towards the muzzle and the sling loop towards the butt. That one generally slides on pretty easy for me. Now what we'll do is we'll take our lock work here, and we're going to put it back into place. That will sit right on there. We'll hold that into place. We'll now take our tang screw, which will be the longer one. Drop it back into place. We'll now put these two screws back in. I can tell which one came from where because that one took the washer with it. And just like we took them out a little bit at a time, we want to put them back in a little bit at a time. If they don't want to go back in, you can loosen the tang screw a little bit, and that will help them find their threads. Once you get that done there, you can take it here and check all the functions on it. The door opens and closes. The trigger still releases the hammer, and it goes back and forth. And you've basically got it reassembled now.
And then lastly, after you check that everything goes back together properly, we can go ahead and put our cleaning rod back in. So I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, you can like or comment. You can also subscribe to my channel so you can make sure that you don't miss anything and catch all the videos that I post. I'm Jeremy with Poindexter G, and we'll see you next time.